College, Jackson County Commission, August 5th, 2019, work session ordered. Roll call, Mr. Manning. Mr. Rich. Present. Mr. Bedlin. Present. Ms. Gilbert. Present. Mr. Sliss. And the chairman is present. We have enough for a quorum. We'll have our invocation uh, by Mr. Porter and our pledge by Ms. Gilbert. God our Father in heaven, uh, we're, we're blessed to be here. We're blessed every day and we're thankful for those blessings. Right now our country's hurting because of the, the loss of life over the weekend, the senseless acts that, that caused those, uh, some folks to be killed and some to be injured. So God, we just pray right now that you'll be with those that survived, help them to uh, recover, be with the families that lost loved ones, give them peace and comfort as we know that you can. And God, we just pray that you'll be our nation. Or you'll continue to watch over us every day. Thank you for our blessings in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we have approved the agenda. Uh, I'd like to take and strike number two, three, and four. Uh, we're going to have to get some more paperwork. We'll put these on uh, the later work session. I'll make the motion for the agenda. With the changes? With the changes. Yeah. I have a motion. I'll take the motion. And a second, all in favor say aye. Aye. No opposed. We have no awards presentations, and uh, Mr. Brown is going to speak for a minute on the uh, paper he's got that needs to be signed. Yeah. My name is Brandon Brown. I'm the director of Jackson County Court Referral and Community Corrections. Uh, we have a contract with the Department of Corrections and every year for the past 20 years uh, we've had to get a letter one time a year signed by the county commission in support of our not as much the community corrections program but for us to operate and supervise Department of Corrections inmates uh, in our program. Um, I've provided a plan. Uh, we update a plan each year, whether we amend anything in there or not. We just revise it when they add something here or there. Y'all have a copy of that. And, um, and that's basically it. I just need the support of the county commission. I've got the support of the judges and everyone else I need in the district attorney. I just don't have the support. I just need the support for the county commission. Sure. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Brown? Oh, I, got, I do have a copy in the office. Uh, I'll make sure that each one of you get a copy of it. Uh, so if everybody decides that's what we want to do, we'll go forward. Do you have any questions for me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Evans? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you all. All right. Next big discussion items from the commission. Uh, number one, be a tax lien resolution of the revenue commissioner. I, I give you a copy of the resolution there. And it might be something Mr. Ford might want to look at. Maybe want to order different. But it, it's uh, I want to switch the uh, tax sale process this year from a tax sale to a lien sale. Uh, then we had. Um, I think six counties in the state that done it. The, the bill passed the year before last, and six counties done it last year. Uh, it's just something I feel like it's better for the uh, taxpayers, but easier for us. It simpl simplifies the process. The uh, tax sale laws in the code is 117 pages, and the lien sale laws is, I think, seven pages. So obviously, it's, it's simpler. You know, the other, other way we've done it, you know, we've really never had any problems, but it's so convoluted. The way it's written in the law, it, it could, you know, we could be sued uh, doing it that way if we don't if we don't do all the steps just right. Uh, and this tax sale lien just simplifies that. And you're noticing that resolution because the uh, code that was passed or the uh, the bill that's passed, it, it's not really something that I have to have permission from you guys to do, but it's something I would rather have in the minutes and have a you know resolution on file that you know right. what year and everything we went to a lien sale. Um, lien sale, you know, I, I've been, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I've been asking y'all for, ever since I've been here, about that $2 a day penalty. And I feel like it's unfair to the people that has to pay it. 
Uh, and y'all been very gracious and understanding about saying, you know, y'all would like to take it off, but I understand your situation. Don't blame you. I know, I know you have to have that money that brings in right now. But in this process, it, it, even though they might have to pay that $2, $2 a day uh, penalty, on the back end, there's not as much interest for them to pay. Uh, you, you know, we don't get them all the fees and everything that, that actually they pay, you know, the cost that we're out of advertising and stuff like that. So, so it's just a it's just a new process, a new way to do it. Uh, I, I included some pages in there with it too to explain how it's done. Uh, just you know, if, if you want to look at it just briefly, uh, instead of selling stuff at the tax sale like we do every year, property that doesn't sell, we'll, we'll have a sale still, but it'll be a lien sale. So instead of selling the property, I, I'll sell a lien on the property. Uh, what happens now is if I sell the property, then immediately people go out there and they take over the property, and they you know we've had some. A lot of complaints. We've had a lot of people that go in and do just a little bit of work for the house and then charge the people that, you know, was unfortunate enough to lose a house all this big, you know, for these repairs and just inflated costs. So in this process, there's no excess bid. Uh, they bid 12%. Uh, I'll start the bidding out. What I would typically do, say, say taxes were $100. I'll start the bidding out at $100 and it'll just go up from there until somebody stops bidding. So in this process, it starts at $100 at 12% interest. That's what the return they'll get. Uh, and then the bidders will bid down. You know, they'll bid down from 12 all the way down to zero. And it spells out what happens, you know, if, that, if we have somebody bids down to zero or, you know, if they have several people bid down to zero. Yeah. What would be the process for uh, the actual change of ownership if I mean, I know now it's three years. Yeah. So, so in the old, in the tax sale law, in the tax sale, what the law says is, is after three years, uh, after three years, you know, just an individual can redeem the property, but but a mortgage company could have seven years, and, and if there was a minor child involved, it could be up to ten years. So the old way, they do get the property right away. I mean, they, they're uh, they're. Uh, able to go out and rent the property, use the property, you know, right away, but they have to wait a lot longer to ever receive a tax, I mean, an actual deed for the property. In this new way, so so for the three years, the redemptive period, they can't touch the property. In other words, you, you don't have some poor person that, if they could have paid the taxes, they would have paid them, and then you go in there and run them off their property, you know, but in three years, the purchaser can actually uh, go through circuit court, circuit court and get a deed. So, so there's a, a downside to it. A lot of the investors that come, they, they're not going to want to do this because they want to take over the property right away. But there's also a plus side to them. In three years, it's possible they could get a, a tax deed for the property. Yeah. Or, or I, I say tax deed, they could actually get a deed for the property. A Correct. deed for that minimal price that they just paid, say $100 down? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, if, well, it won't be $100 because you're the $2 a day penalty. Yeah. That, you know, so it's going to be at least the two hundred and thirty dollars plus whatever the taxes were, uh, and then there'll be a five dollars fee on there. Uh, now, if if we decide to advertise, you, you know, in the bill, it's really up to me whether I advertise in the paper or on the website or just post it somewhere. So if we decide to advertise, that fee will be in there. But so, so for instance, say the taxes total was five hundred dollars, uh, and somebody bids five hundred dollars in three years, if if somebody doesn't redeem that property, then yes, they get a deed for. For that property, but it, most of the time it's considerably more than the taxes they would have it. Yeah, I mean the way it works now, like I said, it, it could be five hundred dollars, and and at, once the sales over, you know your dad's been there before and bought some property. But, yeah. uh, you know it could really go up high, and, and some people bid and bid and bid, and they don't care if they bid twenty, thirty thousand dollars because they're doing it for the interest that they're going to receive back. It's not really about the property as much. But in this way, it really protects the people that's losing the property because the old way they have to pay back the taxes plus they have to pay back 12% interest on whatever was bid. So, so, you know, they could be owing a lot of money. So, so this way, all they have to pay back is the taxes that were due plus the penalties uh, and then whatever interest rate they bid. So, so for instance, if somebody bid 8%, you know, next year that person that lost the property had to pay back the taxes that they were due Plus the two dollar day penalty, uh, and then eight percent per annum on that on that money. Uh, 
So it makes it easier for that person that's experiencing a hardship to get exactly, the property back. Exactly. And then the person that buys the property can't touch, do any improvements or nothing for three years. No, not until they get a deed for the property. So, so basically, I mean, we used to sell the property, and now we're just we're just placing a lien on the property. Looks to me like it's going to save us a lot of, you know, right now we have a lot of people from out of town coming in, like you said, bid forty, fifty thousand dollars on an yeah. acre track of property. Do you know? Yeah. We'll, we'll probably it'll probably be a different set of investors. It, it'll be it. We'll still have the investors. I, I mean, there's a lot of things if, if y'all want to know in, in the new tax lien sale. A lot of things change. Uh, I tell you one thing, for instance. So if if I have a piece of property that nobody bids on, then as it is now, we just that just goes to the state. And the state puts in their inventory, and it may sit in their inventory forever. Uh, they might sell it to somebody, but we don't get anything. So it, now, if nobody bids on that, then it goes into the county inventory. So the county sits there and holds our property. I mean, we rarely have property that nobody bids on. Yeah. But if it did, instead of it going to the state, at least it stays within the county. And then we can decide if we want to, we can sell that property. I mean, you know, that's the way the, the new law spells it out. If nobody bids at the tax sale, and I have four or five left, you know, we can call an investor and we can negotiate a price, yeah. uh, n negotiate an interest rate right. and just sell it to that investor. Yeah. So the county's going to get their money either way. Yeah. Uh, they're going to get their tax money. At least we don't have property that goes to the state that nobody bid on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? Thank Thanks you. For it Everybody okay with putting this on next week's meeting? Yes, yeah. yeah. Sounds like it'll be easier for everybody involved. Next is Bolton Precinct. Um, if everybody patent, here's the new map of the new Bolton Precincts and a sign resolution uh, with each one of the, the new precincts on it. There's a lot of work we finally got that done. I think it's going to end up saving the county quite a bit of money over the years. So we took power out again before. Mm -hmm. No, we just took Mr. C's recommendation on yes. the area. And he spoke with people. Yeah. And if we'll go in back next year, the next the next election year. March. Yeah, March. March. Everybody give that we put that on this week's meeting also. Uh, next few reports from staff. Mr. Manning? No, Mr. Campbell? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have some updates that I can provide this time. Um, and I'll be referring to the weekly activity list we sent out. I won't go through all the routine maintenance activities, but I would like to cover the other projects engineering related. Um, and I'll start with County Road 61. That's a federal legend servicing project, as you all probably recall, for the Pisgah School Zone. Um, those plans, we're working on the plan submittal for that, and uh, we'll be pursuing the school board agreement for that school zone, caution lots, etc. County Road 59, that was our project that's been finalized, or we're working to finalize that project. We're to the stage for uh, ENI submission for reimbursements, so those reimbursements uh, should be on the way shortly. HRRR project that has previously been submitted, that's for County Road 77. Um, we're still on track, uh, that's that's under LDOT review currently, and we're still on track for a September 27th laying on that one. The Matheny Bridge Deck Rehabilitation Project, um, that has been awarded and the notice to proceed has been issued, so we look forward to some contract work commencing within 15 days from the day of that issuance. That How long are we looking for that to be done? That occurred last week. Most likely fully closed only two weeks. Uh, damage inventory FEMA project. So um, we have had FEMA personnel with us cons fairly consistent, consistently uh, for the last two weeks, uh, working through the finalization of project submission into the grants portal system. 11 projects. 
Um, all the previously completed <coughs> work was broken down into 11 projects and also the initial submissions for the slides, uh, sinks were also entered and um, we're anticipating a three to four month review period before some of those reimbursements start, start to come into this. And then there are utility projects. So I won't go through all those. There are several that are ongoing now that, that we routinely visit and permit. Um, they're on that list, those. If there are any questions about that, I can hopefully address those. Um, future HRRR project, uh, County Road 2142 and 67, out of possibilities on that. That's under LDOT review on which they may fund if they do any. Uh, and then rebuild Alabama. So part of our rebuild Alabama law that's passed includes uh, project submission and prioritization by the end of this month, August 31st. That August. 31st deadline that require approval from this body. So we're working, have been working on that since the uh, the forms. I think there's still some audit review finalization required, but we do have some forms as of recent to com compile these on and get them in front of you. So what we'll likely do um, is try to create a short list for you all for your selection on local road. We'll also be working on the ST projects. Um, we've talked briefly on that, but that's that's a gap in funding for that particular category of projects. So this rebuild Alabama funding will likely fit that, and then we'll do that replacement funding. So that'll be the substitute for our what was federal aid research, and we'll be looking to substitute. And that substitute money will follow the same federal aid process as far as class of roads, bridges, etc. So all that to say, we'll be getting a short list in front of you, but in the meantime, if you could be thinking about your districts and local road projects, ST projects. So an ST project would have most likely been a local road with high traffic that had hot mix pavement on there. So not a federal aid route, but a road that was paved with hot mix, and it's most likely going to be a higher traffic local road, but not a federal aid route. Um, hopefully our short list will include your thoughts, but uh, please please be thinking along those lines and we'll, we'll have that in front of you. Uh, some bridge inspection work this month to County Road 354, that's interim inspection. County Road 82 will be doing the deck sounding on it, but it's basically to wrap up our rehab work. If you recall, 82 has been closed. The structural components of that rehab work is complete. We have some uh, guardrail and curb work to do to finalize that, but we'll also be doing some deck sounding to, as part of that. And then lastly, a road closing that will start tomorrow and last approximately three days, and that's on County Road 45 in the Cedar Grove area, between both intersections of County Road 155, and that's going to be close for a cross drain replacement. So that was advertised last, the advertisement went out for the closure last week probably made Wednesday, the weekend, or most likely one time this week. So all that should be out there, but I just wanted to reiterate that. Any questions? Yeah, uh, you mentioned the ST and the new uh, gas tax dollars and uh, previously hot paved uh, road. Are we under the same restrictions as we are with the federal dollars? Thirty-three. You know, there was a section of it that we had to leave out because of the cross train. Uh, the shoulder was too small. Uh, would that be eligible for thirty D with thirty-three? And that section would be an excellent candidate for regal Alabama. We tie two sections together. Yes, we didn't have any pavement on to finish that continuity to the project we started. Yes, sir. Be a perfect project selection. Good question. Any anything else I can? I've got one question. Yes, sir. I've had several calls over 93. Go down the mountain. Guys been calling me and saying, well, I've got my log scooter, I've got a dozer. Can I just go up there and work on that and fix it to where we can come off and up and down the mountain? I said, this is going to be a uh, issue by safety is number one. I mean, liability will be number two. So what do I need to tell them? As far as as far as enforcing no travel on a closed road, right. 
I'm not sure what our role in that would be. The, the, the road department, I'm sure, I don't know what our role would fit in that. Uh, what someone chooses to do, such you know, such as something along those lines, I, I really can't speak to. I don't know, uh, but it's you know, it's closed. It's closed for a reason because it's right. deemed unsafe exactly. for travel. Um, and unfortunately, it's going to be some time before we get to that. Right. That road in particular, the lower section, a lot of the road is gone. Oh yeah. And the middle section, there is a substantial grade differentiation where that has dropped down. So I would not recommend travel by anyone uh, on that on that road. That's what I told them, and, and it seems like I'll tell them that. Then another guy that's got a dozer, he said, "You've got a dozer." I said, "Yeah, we do." If I knew it would be perfectly safe, I wouldn't mind fixing it where you know emergency traffic going down it, but I'd be liable myself. But you know it, it, the safety of the general public is what I'm looking after, and, and, and I don't think it'd be a good idea to do. Yes, myself. sir. I, I don't think promoting travel in an unrepaired state right. would be wise. It would be my recommendation. Recommendation that we we don't encourage that. Well, that's exactly what I've been telling them, and they don't want to see it that way and I understand it is a burden on them and I hate it but you know safety comes first yes but uh, I appreciate it yes sir. Mr. Campbell would you mind I know we've been over this several times but addressing how the funeral comes in because I've been hit up this week myself and last week um, people are understanding we have no money they're they're asking is it going to be fixed is it going to be closed and I keep assuring them that it will be fixed but just kind of how we plan on the reimbursement of the money coming through in the time frame that you went over several times, and I'm sorry to ask you to do it again. No problem. So, um, and and this, bear with me because this changes every every FEMA projects that we have done and submitted receive reimbursement from. It's been different every one I've been involved with. So, this this disaster brought on a new FEMA's new system. Uh, which included a grants portal. It was an electronic system for document entering, information entering, being able to scan in documents that that support uh, what we're turning in for reimbursement. And we've had a program manager that's been, it, once we got to the stage of program manager, it's been fairly consistent. So from that aspect, it's been better in my opinion, uh, this newer system. But there's there's a really large learning curve to their, their portal and their system logging into it, finding information, finding where to enter information, entering information on one sheet that don't correspond to another. So luckily we've had guidance and we've had really good guidance as of late with getting all that entered. Um, so so to answer your question, I guess as short as I can, once we get all that information in there, then it begins their series of reviews that it must go through. Now I'm talking now on work that's been done, not work to be done. So on this work that's been done, once it once it goes through the series of reviews, and we've had the program manager helping us get it the way they want it in there, that's the three to four months that I speak of that I anticipate based on what he's told me. We anticipate that before we start seeing reimbursement. Now, that's if everything if everything goes right, we have it entered, we have the support information they need, etc. They may have environmental questions. They may have dimension questions. They may have location questions, so all that could take rework, but it's fairly complex in the detail, as you might imagine, on each specific site, which sites they group together to make a project, etc. So that's kind of the work that's been done. Uh, the work to be done will be uh, will be multi-stage and just getting to the point of breaking ground. So one of the main things is going to be making sure that we don't have a misstep that causes any problem with our reimbursement. And what I mean by that is assessing the scope of work and making sure we have that contained, whether that be through geotech, through whatever method that, that we feel best about proceeding, this body feels best about proceeding on how to complete that work. We want to make sure they're involved on all the steps of selecting, uh, selecting a contractor, whether that be engineering-wise or repair-wise and then making sure they're involved through their documents process and their new portal on getting the information in front of them and 
having their concurrence, even though they can't technically tell us what to do if, if you ask them, but having their concurrence as we go and making sure they're there with us and we don't miss step on a on a method to where we jeopardize any possible reimbursement funding. So the from here on out, if this if this reimbursement on the work that we have done flows in, here on out it's gonna be a one at a time, most likely on the one at a time on what we can afford and then how far we get ahead of ourselves is really going to depend on, in my opinion, on what kind of cash flow we have coming in, whether it be from 17 or from this work that's been completed and that's coming in. So I hope I answer your question. I'm not, I'm yes, not sure. sir. And well, one of the reasons they had brought it up to me is the last person that addressed it, he said that there's a becoming issues with Tennessee side and one of the alternate routes going off at Nickajack, which is not ours, but that's one of their concerns is there's some base failure and damage and sliding possibly occurring in that area. So they were really concerned to be down the two routes out or off the mountain. The ones that would be to Trent and the other one be off flat road. Yeah, 73, we, uh, when I was with LDOT, we had a slide repair there just above the Tennessee line. And 73, uh, there, there's been movement in that region there for as, as long as I can remember. So. That was one of their I understand, concerns. I understand the concerns, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Of the four slides, we have a priority of going to approach each one, or ten, in what order we're going to approach each one. I know we, we would most definitely want to do the highest traffic areas and affect the most population first, but do we have that laid out yet? I can offer an opinion on that. Now, we can, uh, we can operate under whatever direction we decide to go but um and it's really kind of what shook out of, of logic as we were getting into this but we concentrated on 17 first because it wasn't a FEMA project it's FHWAER funding which in the past we've been able to receive that reimbursement faster it's a little simpler process even though the cost sharing on our part is a little higher so it's an 80 20 versus um, these yeah well the other versus the other that would have been 75 25 that the state kicks in the other 12 and a half so or would only be out 12 and a half percent on the thin ones so 17 was a priority based on the fact that we were anticipating we could get that funding back sooner then it just really boils down to the other three that are remaining um summer house mountain that road is the only way up and down to get to those homes 93 um was next out of complexity and the reason it was next out of complexity is because 38 we're not certain that we would be better rerouting that road and, and realigning that all together doing away with the switchback coming through the cut in the mountain and, and taking a different direction with the roadway that's going to take that's going to take quite a bit of engineering to decide if it's feasible and the best route and we're going to have to prove to FEMA through cost benefit analysis that hey for your investment, this makes sense to abandon this section of roadway. The reason I say that is that section of roadway and the switchback has had problems ever since I can remember it also. So that's really how it how it's stood out and, and kind of stacked up as far as priority, but now we can we can change that and do different. Um, if if you all see fit, we have no problem on which one agree. to work on. I would agree with what you laid out. Especially Summer House Mountain. I mean, you got what, 10 houses? 10, 12 houses? I think there's 20. Say at least 10. I was, I, I was probably leaning closer to 20. Okay. But it's only route. It's the only way they got up and down, and yes. if they get cut off, I mean, you don't understand that. But I get calls over 93 yeah. just about every day, and I told them, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can. And, you know, we just got to go through the steps and do the correct, you know, steps that we got to take. And I'll say this too, about anything's possible, if, right. you know, if we have the money to do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right. we, if we weren't necessarily focused on making sure, for sure, we're going to get reimbursed for every red cent, right. and we want to put contractors to work to get to fixing things, you know, we could, we could fix them all. But, you know, the, the contractors don't want to fight every month. Oh, yeah. So um, we really need a cash flow coming in to be able to fund 
a project going out. So that's that's really why we're you know trying to be methodical about having some cash flow secured before we initiate more than we can more than we can handle. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the comments from the commission. Uh, I just wanted to make sure uh, to remind the public it took about four years last time to get the female last check in. Mm -hmm. So that's just something they need to be aware of. It's not a quick process. And uh, also thank uh, Mr. Venable's mother. She's been volunteering in our office and helping answer the phones with. So that's been a great help this week. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, just be aware your school starts back this week, so I'll show up the bus system and kids in the room. That's awesome. Mr. Rick? Yes, I was going to say, is, is school going back already? <laughs> August 7th. August the 7th is here, and it's good. Yeah, please, everybody, be school aware and uh, watch for the buses. And the little children getting on and off. And Melinda, yes, summer's sir. over with, I guess. Yes, sir. So I'm glad you're going back to school. Yes, sir. Just Me <laughs> too, sir. <laughs> that's all I've got. Next Monday, the 12th at 6 o'clock, we'll be at uh, Bryant Junior High School for community meeting. So we'll have a regular meeting and then community meeting directly following it. It'll be in the Bryant Junior High Gymnasium at 6 o'clock. And then we won't have a meeting on the 19th. Uh, and then the 26th, we'll have a work session at a meeting on the 26th. So that to get everybody informed on our meeting for the month. So that's all I have. And motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. You got a motion? Ah, uh, second. All opposed to Adam? Aye. All opposed?